Let's maybe, uh, <laughs> at, at, in, in, in the risk of having too much agreement, I think there's very little risk of that, but um, maybe let's bring in someone from industry. Let's bring in uh, Ulrich uh, Strebeck from Dong Energy to talk about the business perspective of, and the situation. Thank you. Oh, is it? It's, it's working. On, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's a difficult, uh, difficult uh, to follow uh, uh, these, uh, Punch and these uh, uh, WASP uh, uh, fights, <laughs> but uh, I, I, <coughs> I don't think uh, I will be a WASP, uh, Philip, but, uh, mm. but uh, actually I, I, I thought agreed uh, with both of you, but, uh, a bit but, uh, <laughs> but uh, then, then, then uh, y y your voice couldn't have been so high, uh, uh, Claude. No, I, I, I guess I will, uh, I will, I will speak as a, from a business point of view, mm. um, as, a, as an investor, I guess uh, I could also be speaking as, as one uh, uh, that would uh, have suffered from the last 10 years since we did have uh, coal fire power stations. We, we choose to speak as an investor. Uh, that's, that's how we see this. Uh, uh, perhaps just two words of background. If, if, you, if you don't know uh, uh, my company, it's, uh, it's uh, I guess, mid-sized European utility uh, uh, active in oil and gas and uh, offshore wind and uh, thermal power and heat production and sales uh, and distribution. Uh, so a little bit of everything. Um, and um, if, uh, I guess about five years ago, about uh, uh, yeah, most of our electricity and heat production was fossil based. Uh, uh, and uh, until we made, a, I guess, a strategic decision to, to, to change. Uh, uh, from about 15% renewables to uh, to 85% renewables by 2040, and uh, we are a little bit, uh, and we we want to do that uh, front loading this. So, I guess doing uh, the opposite of what you see in the impact assessment, uh, and uh, and we are a little bit ahead of of this uh, plan uh, uh, now with with CO2 content. Um, and, and we, are, we are doing this uh, on, I guess, uh, four main areas uh, and uh, probably areas that, that a company like mine uh, can more or less be active in. Uh, we, we are doing something about the existing plants that we have. we have. We have frankly been closing down some of them, taking them out of operation. They've been competed out uh, of the market, I guess, uh, by, by renewables. Uh, at least in uh, th that is at least a, a clear picture in Denmark, uh, and we are going to uh, take more out uh, in the coming years. Uh, we are uh, converting uh, uh, most of the remaining ones into biomass, so we have actually reduced our consumption of coal uh, uh, very markedly. Uh, and then we are uh, developing offshore wind uh, wherever we can wherever there is a market uh, for that, uh, uh, since we can, because that's, th that's what we know how to do. Uh, and, and we have been engaged in, in combined cycle uh, uh, gas uh, turbines uh, uh, in, 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 in some countries. Uh, and, and we do see gas uh, for power generation uh, uh, as, a, as a very important uh, uh, part of the equation, uh, uh, both, to, both as a as a relative CO2 reducer, but obviously first and foremost as a as a balancing, as a balancing and backup uh, supply for for variable re uh, renewables. So, um, uh, I guess that that this uh, this this strategy, <coughs> this approach, has uh, uh, yeah, at least developed uh, or, or made us uh, made us uh, become a, a global leader in in offshore wind. Uh, and and what we do, what we want to do with that is to further industrialize uh, that sector, uh, to bring down the cost uh, of energy. Uh, of course, that has to that has to happen. Um, we have, uh, I guess, it's also fair to say that we have uh, developed very strong competences in biomass. Uh, uh, we do expect that new uh, uh, biomass technologies uh, has a, a big role to play, and 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 we think. Uh, some of our technologies and solutions can be a part of that. Uh, that is also a quite clear picture from the from the impact assessment that that biomass. We, we then have to sort out, and we, we that that's certainly a need for us as an investor. Uh, what 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 are the rules of the game? What what does sustainability mean? I think 
the public, uh, and we uh, have a, have an obligation to 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 think about that and 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 uh, act responsibly on that. So, uh, if you could deliver that, that would be fantastic. Um, uh, we have, uh, I believe, also by 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 being uh, first uh, you know, mainly centered in Denmark, uh, which has a, a very high uh, share of wind power. We have also learned how to to master that to 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 run our plants flexibly, to uh, uh, do do other uh, clever things, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I guess that 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 it is fair to say that we we have done. A, a marvelous things with that, but the most important uh, factor has quite clearly been that this is taking place in a quite effective market. It's, it's taking place in a, an efficient market environment uh, in the Nordic region. Otherwise, uh, it, it couldn't have happened. Uh, and we also d did develop some, I think, quite good solutions together with our customers uh, on, on energy efficiency. Uh, and making making a business uh, out of that, make, finding finding the values and and, and 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 turning it into to an opportunity. A little bit, uh, I, I, I guess, it, it takes a little bit of uh, accustoming to to think about a product that you make and sell uh, to, to 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 create a product, another product, another service that is about uh, uh, selling less. Uh, but we think we have found uh, that, and, and in any case, that has to be obviously a part of, mm. of, of what we need to do. So, so that's it. So um, we pursue these goals for various reasons. Uh, national policies, as, as, as we do know, they, they uh, of course play a, a huge role. Uh, they have played a huge role in, in, the, in all the countries that we are active in. But I do, I do think uh, European policy is, has been the driver uh, at least since the 2020 uh, targets were agreed, that that is also obviously clear. Uh, perhaps uh, national policymakers uh, do also want to to claim uh, some of the some of that, and they should. But but it is quite clear that the the overarching framework has been absolutely uh, essential. Um, so so. Uh, all in all, so far we believe, as a, as, a, as a business, that we have been fairly successful. Uh, as a business in a quite tough uh, business environment, uh, the last years. Um, uh, but but by doing these things, uh, uh, yeah, it is a response to first of all a very bad situation with our existing power plants, and building on some skills that we believe we have. Uh, but it is also for a business, uh, by going down, down that route, it is a bet. Uh, and uh, it is a bet uh, that, uh, that, that European policy will play out. Uh, we, we are striving to make uh, our solutions uh, more and more competitive. Uh, but in the end, we are, <laughs> we are dependent on policies. Uh, we are uh, dependent on policies that support uh, decarbonisation, that support the development of, of renewables, that can enable modernisation of grids, uh, and so on. And, 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 and we are dependent on uh, the, the continued development of, of seamless uh, and effective markets. Um, so so, so uh, in that, uh, it is also this bet, I guess, is, 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 is our bet of, uh, founded on a reading of, of where we are and where, where we should and need to go to. And, uh, and, and we do believe, obviously, that, that Europe uh, needs to, to, to react responsibly and, and prepare itself, uh, of course, to climate change, but, but perhaps uh, more so to, 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 to this uh, guaranteed uh, increased fight for for uh, resources uh, globally. Uh, the other thing you can discuss with with, with scientists and things, but the f an, an increased fight for resources is, is 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 certain. And a lot of these things that we do, they are meeting uh, both those targets. Are you in favor of 2030 targets for renewables? So I'll come to that. That's on my next page. Good. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so uh, the roadmap for 2050 uh, lays out the the, the, the road, uh, but but I think for us as an investor for for business, what is more important is is not the roadmap but the road, 
and uh, I guess our our f far light is is directed at 2030 could be a good mm -hmm. year. Uh, uh, 2020 is just around the corner. 2030 uh, is is uh, pretty much uh, you know as far as our calculators uh, can can reach uh, for for now. But but uh, we, because we know that in any case what happens after that that, that that is so uncertain with technology and, and opportunity. And for that, what we need is is a, a, an, an ETS that works. Uh, it's it is in shambles uh, at the moment. Um, uh, uh, to 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 just bring it out of that state, uh, uh, the set aside uh, option is is probably critically uh, necessary. Um, but but of course uh, the, the the new binding targets for 2030 are, are should be the fuel should be a, 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 a turning point. But we we also do see that beyond 2020 we do need new renewable policies. Just the fact that that we are here today uh, with with the with the ETS that that looks like it does and and does not affect the decisions really whatsoever uh, and and to 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 found our business uh, on on a belief that all that will change completely by 2020 that is just too risky. Uh, some new uh, policies on renewables, uh, new targets. Uh, need to, 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 to be in place. Um, those, those, uh, those policies uh, should be uh, probably more effective uh, than what we have seen. Uh, they they uh, should probably work in, no, they should definitely work in, in better harmony with the ETS so that those, those, those two policy instruments does not eat each other. But, but um, just the thought of, of everything ending uh, after 2020 with an uncertain ETS will, will just create, a, you know, it can, it can be a great risk for that entire renewable industry and, and create stop and go development that will just be more expensive. So that was number two. The num number three is the infrastructure. Uh, uh, that that is, uh, is, is, is an obvious thing. It is also very easy to, to, to talk about. It's very, very difficult to, 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 uh, to make happen. But, but uh, uh, development of, of cross-border interconnectors, development of transmission grids, uh, in, in our view, really need to, 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 to ac accelerate uh, you know, remarkably. Uh, and uh, I, on that, the infrastructure package is, of course, uh, uh, very, very <coughs> essential and important. I, 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 do, I do think that we can do even more to make sure that all, all efforts, uh, all uh, <coughs> financing resources uh, are, are, are put to play there. And finally, what I wanted to say, and then I will, uh, and then I will close, is that um, we also do need uh, other sources uh, than, than just trade across borders to, 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 make, uh, to balance our systems, uh, to, to stand as a backup. Uh, and and uh, we, we, we need to balance load, as we have always needed to balance load. That is not, a, that is not an easy thing. Uh, and then we need to balance the new renewable energy sources. And what we have been doing that with in the past has been with thermal power plants. There are fewer and fewer of those, and there are more and more under pressure. They operate for fewer and fewer hours. Uh, this is something that we believe we need to look at uh, uh, with the market design, making sure that, that, that backup and flexible resources are rewarded, uh, both the uh, uh, conventional ones, thermal, whatever, and also the new ones, the demand response, uh, and also all the other clever, clever solutions that we haven't even seen realized yet. Um, and, and, and again, there, uh, in, in that uh, uh, natural gas, uh, uh, we believe, will have to play a, a, a very important role. So the whole framework around uh, natural gas is, of course, uh, also of, of essence, so that, you can s so that you can make these investments also in the, in the gas-fired power stations. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Jason, over to you. And... Uh, if you could keep it reasonably brief, because I, th I think we'll probably have quite lively debate, and I think maybe we should uh, move on to that. But I'll do my best. I'm not sure anybody else finds me as interesting as no. I do, so that's <laughs> all right. Um, the, uh, 
like Claude, who invoked the IEA, which has made something of a transformation over the past few years, we are always uh, interested in seeing the messages we can get out from institutions that are not our own, including the European Commission. So I think there are some uh, common points of interest in the energy roadmap that, that I'd like to start with. We can get onto some differences perhaps later, but obviously we as WWF would agree with the no regrets measures being renewable energy, energy efficiency, and energy infrastructure as being vital. Uh, we also take home the message that I think is quite powerful if, if you look across the scenarios and compare it to a reference, if you will, a business as usual scenario, they all cost about the same, which is to say compared to business as usual, decarbonization is free. I think that's, a, that's an important message. Now, our analysis of the Commission's roadmap shows that energy savings starting now is really vital across all of those scenarios and also into others, including our own. Uh, the decarbonization scenario simply will not be achievable if, if you do not achieve uh, energy reductions. So the result of the EED, uh, while we can understand why the, the, uh, the conclusion was reached as it was, cannot uh, help but being somewhat disappointing in that it's calculated to reach around 15% energy savings rather than the 20% that the legislation was intended to, which leaves work yet to be done. And this includes in files that are just coming up, for example, reviews of, of cars and CO2 leg legislation, also vans, um, and, uh, and product standards. And uh, so we would look in the future to, a, uh, in a future policy, to a, a binding and more ambitious energy uh, reduction uh, target because Otherwise, we are going to fail across any scenario and energy, energy, en any energy choice that, that you would prefer. Um, now, given the age of fossil fuel production in the EU, there's really a window of opportunity of about 15 years in which we can say we are either going to reinvest in fossil fuels and lock them in well beyond the date that it's tenable in a decarboni decarbonized Europe, or we're going to invest much more heavily in renewable energy. Now, in general, the upfront high, uh, costs of, of renewable energy may be higher than some others, but the long-term benefits which accrue annually are, uh, are much higher. This includes uh, not only keeping us free of dependence on fossil fuel costs, the fuel costs themselves, there's also more jobs, and this is a growing set of industries. A report we released in Parliament last week indicated the value of clean energy technology industries, which is um, which is growing tremendously uh, year on year. Now, we also, by de being dependent on fossil fuels into the future, we're exposed to a set of risks, the cost, but also geopolitical risks, and of course the environmental risks. We think it's simply a higher risk pathway to be dependent on fossil fuels in the future. So gas does have a rule, uh, role as a transition fuel, but that doesn't mean that there's going to be more gas. It may be higher as a share in, in some scenarios, but not as an absolute amount of gas in Europe. Um, and that, that should fall over time. And if you look long term, then, then gas is simply incompatible uh, with a decarbonized Europe, uh, unless you're willing to make a, a, a very heavy bet on carbon capture and storage. And again, if you look across your options, this just, just seems to be uh, delivering a, a high chance of, or, or giving us a high chance of non-delivery risk on decarbonization if you, if you want to make that bet. We, we have to set some kind of boundaries, and I think gas represents a really important case here for this, for, for, for this issue. There's far more gas in the ground than the atmosphere can tolerate uh, seeing used. So how do we make the choices around what is, uh, what is possible to be used? Because we simply can't continue uh, to deliver it as though it had no consequences. Now, I, I've seen uh, presentations of future energy scenarios uh, in Brussels over the years from Shell. There's one from uh, BP in, in Brussels this week. Uh, I saw one from recently from Exxon. And the fossil fuel industry likes to generally, particularly the gas industry, likes to present uh, a word that I heard Philip use. I'm not going to allow you directly with this. But nevertheless, you use the word which is realistic or reality. <laughs> Companies like to say, we're not, we're not, uh, we don't have a green vision of the future. People can solve that environmental problem if they want to. We have to make a business case and show you what's going to happen. I think that's a total abdication of the responsibility of being part, uh, not only a good citizen, but seeing their corporate future in a decarbonized world. I would like to know where do companies like Shell see themselves in a world where <coughs> in a few years, in, a, in a just a matter of a handful of decades, we really need to be at very high levels of decarbonization. And that requires much more 
of a vision than simply you solve the environmental problems, we'll just make sure that we keep pumping whatever we're selling. In terms of the roadmap uh, infrastructure, again, we agree that that's a very important uh, facilitator and we see the, the following priorities which would include the passage of the PCI regulation and the Connecting Europe facility. Not everything in there is to our liking, but these are, these are very important. We certainly see a focus on electricity infrastructure. Um, our analysis shows that if you just look at the, the Commission's current uh, plans uh, for gas infrastructure, for import of gas to the European Union, you really don't need any further investment beyond what's already on the books b before you get uh, to a point where you are overcommitted to, to gas as a supply source for Europe. So we don't need to overinvest in infrastructure because obviously that represents a, a large risk for lock-in. Now, we consider that the Commission scenarios are really just heuristics. These are not options. These are not choices that, that will be taken as such. And the range of scenarios that were offer, offered were far too narrow. Claude already mentioned a very obvious one, which is the relationship between high renewables and, and high energy savings. So we shouldn't become fixed on any particular numbers coming out of this. There was a 30% <coughs> renewable energy figure that, that a number of the scenarios converged on around 2030. To us, that doesn't say anything. There's any number of analyses that show you could go much deeper, uh, much farther with renewable energy by 2030. Compared to the literature, the Commission tends to us underestimate uh, the potentials for renewable energy, as has you know, been consistently the, pa uh, the place over, over the decades. So our own energy report um, gets to 100% renewable energy, not only in Europe, but globally, precisely because we take into account this relationship between energy savings and renewable energy. Now, moving forward, it's important to emphasize that under the EU treaties, EU energy and environment legislation is a shared competence. So it's certainly uh, in the interest of the environment and the European market uh, to see continued EU policy uh, that promotes these no-regret re options that's both justified and necessary. So in the future, there would have to be, in our view, three uh, priorities for, for future policy. One is that we have to be guided by staying on track to 80 to 95 percent emissions reductions. And let's not use those lang that language glibly. To 95 percent, that number can't fall off the table at the moment the Commission's analyses are based on an 80 percent reduction. 95 percent reduction will become, I think, far more evident as what's needed, particularly after we see the release of the fifth assessment report, which um, with any, um, you know, if, if, if history is true to form, will continue to scare the pants off people even further. And in order to be able to uh, stay within shouting distance of 95 percent, that's going to put even more pressure on decarbonization early, including before 2030. We need to ensure the sustainable use of resources, energy resources among them, which means uh, controlling energy demand. If we're unable to control our demand, the supply has to meet it, and that supply will include things that are simply unsustainable at high volumes, not just oil and gas, but things like bioenergy. We have to be very careful about where our energy resources come from. And the third thing is that we need to focus on what works in EU policy. We're here in Brussels thinking about how you can actually make effective European policy. Um, I've been here long enough to see any number of failed voluntary initiatives, indicative targets, and who knows whatever else. This means we need to see a series of, of policy measures which includes binding targets for renewable energy, for energy savings, and for greenhouse gas emissions. And the first thing, of course, that we're going to be see seeing coming up is uh, uh, addressing the failing emissions trading system. We just came out with a report with Greenpeace earlier this week showing that you have to have backloading this set aside of at least 1.4 gigatons of permits to beyond 2020 if you want to have any effect on the market. And these have to be cancelled. In addition to reducing the, the linear reduction factor from 1.74% to something on the order of 2.6% if we want to be consistent with the Commission's own roadmap to 2050. So unless we make, make these changes, we're simply not on a credible pathway towards decarbonization.